Today we're repairing a scooter that's got a throttle pod problem. Now what's happening with this scooter, this is a, a road night, I, it's the same as a shop rider scooter. What the customer is stating that as he's driving forward, let's switch the key on, as he's driving forward and pushes the wig wag lever, the speed varies. Once he has it full power or half power forward and he holds the lever, what eventually happens is the scooter slows down and then it goes fast again and it slows down again. So a few things you would check with this particular problem is the play in the throttle pod. Not this play, the play is up and down play. Now when you get the up and down play here, it could be a possibility that the pot is worn, especially when the speed is going slow, fast, slow, fast, when you press this particular lever all the way. So he's driving along, the scooter slows down, and he's not doing anything, and he's driving on the level, no problems whatsoever, but it's for some odd reason, the scooter slows down and takes off. The power, as you can see, is still full, so there's no battery issue there at all. So the problem lies with the throttle pod. The throttle pod is located on this particular lever underneath here. So what I'm now going to do is, I'm going to remove the, the plastic shroud here and show you how this throttle pod looks and how this is fixed onto the frame. Now you can see how this is all fitted together. There's your throttle pod here. That's attached to the, the wig wag lever here. So as you move it backwards and forwards, the throttle pod, which is actually a resistor, a 5K resistor, sends the signals through these wires down to the control box. So there's a problem with this. These are the old style. They only last a specific amount of times usually about a million cycles, they testing maybe half a million cycles, and once they wear, we've got to replace them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this off, put it on the workbench, put a new throttle pod on it, and we'll see how we get on from there. And we'll put it back on and test it. So this is us taking uh, the, the throttle throttle pod off uh, the short rider scooter. There's your wig wag lever secured with the, the two bolts onto the frame. You've got your three wires leading off, and we need to replace this bad boy here. That's causing us a problem, causing us a speed fluctuation um, when it's full power applied or half power applied. If we don't move this and the speed goes up and down, there's a problem inside this throttle pod. Now, I've had some customers saying, oh, we've opened it up, we've cleaned it with about WD-40 or contact um, lubrication, and it's worked fine. Yeah, maybe it worked fine for maybe a week or two, but in my, my opinion, do not go in there, throw it away. And let's show you what's in here. At the end of the day, rather me going in here and showing you what there is and you wasting yours just for a wee nosy. It's been a long time since I've been in one of these. Right, I've stuck this in the vise. There's your cover. There's the port. Give it a wee chat with the hammer. Just a bit of screwdriver, just at the edge, and it just popped out. That's your, your neutral point when you're down there. So that should be just about halfway. That's your neutral point. So as you go forward and backwards, so that one will be forwards, one will be backwards. These wires go along the track here and change the resistance that is sent through to the control box. As I say, some people go in it, give it a wee clean. Do not do it. Throw it away. It's by its best. Um, that's what ShopRider do. They put uh, anti-tamper connections on there just to make sure that nobody's tampered with it a spring. What we're also going to do is we're going to replace that spring as well. Uh, we keep these springs in stock. We're going to replace that spring when we're at it because after a certain amount of cycles, this will end up uh, breaking. And I think I have one floating about here somewhere that has actually got a broken spring on it. Well, there we are. That's it here. There's one here. 
as you can see one part of the spring the other bit's broken off so that what can happen as well you know you're driving along next minute nothing happens it moves about no problem we can supply the spring anyway so what we need to do we need to do here first of all I advise anybody physically take some pictures of what you've got here because when you take it off and you forget, you don't know what colour goes where and how it's sitting. Is this pin point, these pins pointing that way or the pins pointing this way? Um, so take as many pictures as you want. Take a picture of the connections. I know where everything belongs. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to unsolder these connections and then clean all this up. And then unslacken these two grommets here thing is with these two grommets these grommets are set so once you've tightened these grommets you can't adjust the throttle pod and I recommend if you are replacing it to do this on the scooter and I will show you how to do that okay so I'm just going to unsolder these connections here that's uh, solder and iron on that takes a couple of minutes to heat up unsolder these yellow white and pink this is a shop rider one there are different uh, makes available out there for instance let's move that this is all preset you buy it the way it is this is a, a Kimco Strider engager assembly slightly different also as well as they've put an anti tamper proof uh, seal on there so it's a bit of pain to get in there uh, another one would be the new style on the market well if this goes faulty, there's no way you'll get in here. There's not a chance you get in here. If this is faulty, you just throw it away and buy a new one. Right, soldering iron's heating up here quite nicely here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unsolder these connections here. Put a bit of solder on so the heat transfer from the soldering iron goes a bit better on these connections here let's try the there's pink away white and yellow so that's just taking the wire off we'll put that aside and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to undo these two two nuts here which to be honest are a pain let me move my soldering iron best thing is to clear them out really well look at the allen keys going there about two and a half mil i actually use a a specific torque that i stick in there and unslacken it so i'll do that now I'll stick that on the workbench uh, on the on the vice here so it doesn't move and slacken these off and then we'll see how we get on from there Okay, I've now uh, slackened uh, the wee grommets in here, so it shouldn't be too bad to come off. What you do is you stick your screwdriver in between the nut here and gently pry. Sometimes you may need two. This one has come off no problem, as you can see. And that's it off. So put that aside. As you can see, you've got your, your throttle pod here. That's your shaft. You've got that nut here holding on the spacer underneath and the spring. And then another, another nut at the bottom. So you take your 13mm and slacken the top nut. Then the spring will come off. Okay. So that's the old swing. We'll, we'll put this new one on it. So that's the old one goes aside. There's your spacer. nut star washer and that's it dismantled so there's quite a few pieces uh, to the pot lots of bits and pieces to go back on that's the other way around about there we go so what we need is a new pot so this is a clavio pot very specific we should have different pots here available there's one here there's one here this one's of course far too long a shaft but they're all various different lengths that you can get 
That's its spitting partner there. So I put that away, new one goes back on now. I oh, saw so, so many pieces. I wish I'd taken pictures to it. Is it going on this way? Is it going on that way? You know, how does it go on again? I can't remember. I've not taken any pictures. So that's why I always say take pictures. If you don't want to go to this extent of dismantling it and just buying a pot and putting it on, buy a whole new assembly. Easiest way for you. We do sell the whole assembly, which is preset. Okay, what I mean by preset is that you kind of just put this pot on anyway and tighten it up uh, and it'll work. No, it has to be set at exactly, well, roughly about uh, two and a half, two and a half K. A lot of people think it's a 5K pot. What we'll do is we'll just get a 5K pot, i.e. speed pot from zero to uh, five. This one works completely different. This has a dead spot in it. So it's right in between 5k, it'll be 2.5 in the middle to 5 out here, 2.5 here, 5 out there. That's for forward and reverse. Right. Let's unscrew this, the new, the new nut washer. Nut goes on, washer goes on, everything goes back exactly the same it doesn't take long if you if you've done it a few times there's your washer going back on old spring we'll put a new spring on it and then the nut goes on the very one at the very top okay let's tighten that up and then that can go back on here sorted as quick as that now <laughs> If I put that on the screw now and soldered the wires back on here, it would not work. The reason being, this has to be set. So, all the way to the right, all the way to the left, and then halfway back. That's how I'd start off with that being in line with the center wire. Okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my soldering iron back on again. And I'm going to solder these connections back on here exactly the same way they have came, came off there. Of course you'll have taken pictures so you'll remember how it's done. I've been doing it so many times I know exactly what goes where. Right, so first of all I'm going to make sure that the temperature is right. We're not there yet. I use about 350 to 360 degrees centigrade on my soldering iron. That melts it quite quickly. That's it, soldered back on. Now what we can also do, some people want to put it on, some heat shrink. Some of the throttle pods have sequent fitted to them. Heat shrink, there you go. Looks like this when you put it on. Cut this into three bits, slide it on here, push it over the top, like that. Heat it with a heat gun, and then it shrinks in there. Some of the shop rider ones have it, some don't. This one didn't have it, so at the end of the day, it's okay. That's it all wired up, ready to put back on the scooter. And then once it's on the scooter, we need to set it up. So I'm gonna put this on the scooter, well, and then we'll set it up, and then what we'll do when that's on the scooter, and it's set right, we'll tighten these grub screws. Now I've refitted um, 
a throttle pod assembly to into the loom and to the to the frame of the tiller. So now I've actually got to adjust the pot in itself. Uh, I've secured that onto the shaft here by just pushing it on. I still need to tighten it with the Allen key that I've got here once I've set the pot to the neutral zone. I kind of more or less adjusted it when I put it on on the workbench right to the middle. But um, what we're going to do is we'll switch the scooter on and see how we get on. At the moment what I've done is I've uh, jacked up the scooter on the back so that if the wheels do turn when I move this bit at the bottom here the scooter is not going to disappear in front of me. So I'm switching it on and I hear a beeping. So that tells me there's a problem the way I've set this up. I've not set it up right. So what I'm going to do, put my screwdriver in underneath and slightly turn it a fraction, switch it off, switch it on again, no noise. So I more or less know it is in the centre position. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push the lever to go forward. I can hear the brake disengaging and the scooter moving. It's full speed. Let go and the brake comes back on. It is important that you try both ways and it is important that when you press the lever you can hear the brake clicking on and off. So if you watch how I do pull the lever, it takes a specific distance for the brake to come on. Quite a bit actually. So that will tell me if I just push that a little, pull it a little bit, the brake will come on quicker. There's an audible reversing tone and the brake's coming on quicker. So I still need to adjust it a little bit more. There you go, I switched it off now, I just turned it a wee bit more. There you go, I've got a little bit more leverage going on there. Brake comes on. Click, brake comes back on again, same here. So it comes on a bit quicker now. So what I tend to do is I sometimes also let it go and let it spring back by itself. So that I know the brake will come on. Now that I'm happy the way it's set, I will tighten these grommets. Is a little bit. So that's one tightened. Once I've tightened one, I will try it again. Brake comes on. Brake comes on. I'm happy now. Once tightened, I'll tighten the other side. Once that's done, put it on. Put everything back together again. Do the two bolts at the top. Two bolts at the front where the basket bracket goes on, put these plastic grommets back on here and take it for a test run. But as I say, if you do not want to play about with removing the pot and adjusting it and putting the grub screws in and re-soldering, you can actually buy the whole assembly already preset. Hopefully that was of assistance to you. If there's any questions that you have, just feel free to send us an email or phone us.